All right, I'm here today with Fred Moore. Fred Moore, I would like to talk to you about your quick marketing that you've been doing. Now, I know you're a professional productivity speaker and magician. You've been doing something that's very interesting that caught my attention because I teach something similar to this in my 90-minute marketing program on day 11 about being creative. You're actually using and branding your image with sayings. How can you explain what you're doing with this and what your your basic little goal is? Yeah, well, basically my goal is to deliver useful content to the people that I might book me or hire me or use my services. Much like anyone else who has a product or service that they're selling, uh, they tend to use social social media like as buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Uh, and it's kind of akin to you go out on a first date and you're expecting to quote score on the first date and <laughs> you don't even know the person. Uh, this great book by uh, Dale, or, uh, Gary Vanderchuk called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And he talks about you need to deliver content, useful content, things that these people can actually use to build that relationship. So if I just put out there, hey, look, it's me, Fred Moore, hire me for your next conference to be your keynote speaker. Um, that's not going to hold much weight because they don't know who I am. They don't know what I do. They don't trust me. They don't know. They don't like me. So that's what social media is all about. It's social. It's about connecting with people. And I found the best way to do that is to put some content that I think might be useful to some people out in the, uh, in the Internet world, the social media world. Now, with what I do, speaking and entertaining, I want to brand that with me. I want to have my, my message out there, the content that I'm delivering, but I also want my picture there because I want them to associate it with me. On these uh, uh, memes, as they're called, is also my website at the bottom. Now, it's not like blaring, like, hey, look at me, check me out, check me out. No, it's right there at the bottom. So it's sort of a subtle type of a thing. And one of the things I found f for me is useful, because I've seen this a lot with other people, they'll put motivational quotes from other people up there, which is fine. I do that a little bit because there are some great, great quotes out there from some of my favorite speakers and just people in, in general. But that's not doing a whole lot for my brand. So what I've been doing is putting out my content, my thoughts, my tips, my techniques, things that I do or say or believe in, and associating it with me. So it's like, this is what I've said, and here's my image, and there's my website. So I'm de delivering value, hopefully, to whoever's looking at these things. I know there's a very long answer to your short question, but I hope I hope you get what I mean. Yes, I, while you were talking, I put up a couple pictures to so people could actually see what you're talking about and cool. get a, a feel of it. I've noticed in each one of these, you have a professional look to you. As an entertainer and a professional speaker, you would like that. Now, were these photos that you went specifically out for this? and said, okay, I need to you know, do 27 wardrobe changes for these little quick flyers that I'm going to use, or were these stack photos? Where did you get your photos from? Uh, I did a photo shoot several years ago. Uh, one of the benefits of having my hairstyle <laughs> is that my haircut or is not going to change. I'm not going to go gray in a couple of years and have to re reshoot these photos. Uh, so I had this done probably three, maybe even four years ago. And when I got it done, I just, I had probably four or five different wardrobe, wardrobe changes. And I must have gotten probably 150 photos taken at least. Uh, and it was just different things because I knew that I wanted some, quote, promotional shots of me, you know, or the, uh, you know, the standard, you know, hand in the pocket, JCPenney catalog pose. You know, I wanted some, some of those shots, but I also wanted photos that I could use on my website. Now, this is long before I even thought about doing any of these memes. And when I thought about doing the memes, and initially I just had quotes and things like that, but it wasn't doing anything for me. It wasn't associating with me, my brand. So I went back to these pictures and was like, aha, now I can use these pictures. 
I now, knew at the time that if I get a whole bunch of pictures done, I'll find a use for them somehow, some way. Would, and, you, uh, would, you, it, would you say that these pictures are basically the outtakes or maybe something you wouldn't use in a high-end promotional marketing piece? Because I know you, you have not one of these, you have dozens of these that you've made. So is this something that you kind of went through and went, you know, this one I may not use as a promo because I'm standing funny, but if I chop it up a little, I could use it for a meme or in a marketing situation? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, some of the uh, photos are, you know, downright goofy. I'm making a face, uh, you know, crossing my eyes or pointing or, or doing just weird things. Uh, and, and again, I did that because I thought, well, you know, I might find a use for this, and it's great, you know, on my contact Fred page, instead of just a phone number and a little form there, you know, I could have a picture of me holding a sign that that's where the form is, contact Fred. And it's, again, associating me with my brand because I am my brand. Which, so, is, nice, yeah. which is nice because you're recycling, basically. Uh, you're oh, exactly. recycling some of your material that some people would have thrown away. So it's a good way, especially with social media. Now, when I actually originally contacted you about doing this quick interview, you were off uh, on a cruise ship entertaining, and you did not miss a beat actually posting. These, these were still coming out while you were working. You were still marketing and working your group. Now, could you give us just, uh, we don't want your specific, but give us a little workings on how you go about setting that up. And sure, you don't have to go on a technical, just give us a, a broad view of what you do. Yeah. Well, you know, marketing is like breathing. You have to do it every day, right, in order to survive. So uh, I knew that even though I was out on a cruise ship and Internet was sketchy uh, at best at times, I still needed to get this contact out. I needed to be marketing. Hey, what a great idea. Uh, I used uh, – there's several uh, options out there. The particular one I used was Hoot, Hoot, Hoot Suite like hoot as an owl, hoot sweet. But basically what these things do is they schedule your content to go out. Your social media posts, your tweets, your, your memes, whatever you want to put out there, you can schedule it ahead of time. So if I know I'm going to be out on a cruise for a week, I will sit there and go, all right, well, I'm going to be gone this day and I'm coming back this day. I need to schedule all these things to go out during that time. And even when I'm not out on a cruise ship, I still do it. Monday mornings, that's the first thing I do, 9 o'clock in the morning. I get up, come in the office, and I spend probably, let's see, 89, maybe 91, maybe 90 minutes. Hey, 90 minutes more getting <laughs> a great idea. Uh, probably about 90 minutes scheduling all my content for the week, sometimes even more, a week and a half, two weeks, uh, depending on you know, how fast I've got these things going. Now, what I will do is these, these memes, I set them up, I make them up ahead of time. Uh, one of the things I did actually on the cruise was sit there with my computer and just in Photoshop make all these memes, all the quotes, all that, and I've probably got about 40 or 50 of them uh, stashed away right now. So when I go to schedule my content, it's like, all right, here we go. Here's this picture. Here's this image. Here's this image. Now, have you found, because I know there's somebody going to be sitting there going, Fred, that's a waste of time. Nobody's going to view these things. I've actually noticed some people have actually made comments on your Facebook page. I'm a, I'm a follower of yours. Uh, we're friends. Mm -hmm. and uh, You're stalking me. I know. That's yes, fine. Quietly, quietly, except when I announce it to the world like this. But I've noticed that people have actually done comments. And it's not just, hey, Fred, you look great. These are actually comments that are responding to your messages. Exactly. And that's what you want. Social media, you want that interaction. See, people are seeing these things, but they're commenting on it because it means something to them. Now, the ones that get commented on, obviously, they mean something to that person. I'll go ahead and comment or like their comment, again, depending if I'm there at the time or in town. Uh, but that's what you want. That's what social media is all about. It's all about that interaction, that, that connection. Now, have you taken the time to actually go a little farther in the depth analysis to find out if your red blazer gets more shares than you in a tie or you making a, a funny face? Because I know statistics have shown sometimes that if you have a picture of a baby or a woman or a sexy photo, that draws. Not saying you're not sexy. I was going to say, hey, now. 
But no, not, but saying, have you done any research to see if there's a pattern with the colors, or have you done any real research like this, or I, is it just more gut feel? It's just more gut feel, yeah. Um, I have been sort of paying attention to which ones get response, which ones don't. Uh, the problem with that is you need to get a lot of data first, so there's got to be a lot of content out there to get sort of an average. And then also, if I change something that's like, all right, well, with marketing, if you send out, if you do a split test with two sales letters, you don't really want to have two completely different sales letters. You want to have one headline in this sales letter and a different headline in this sales letter, but everything else is the same. Right. Because if you change too many things, then you're not going to know, well, what was working in that one that did better than this one? Because there's so many things that are different. So that's why I've got specific looks. You know, I've got the red jacket or I've got the blue shirt. And those are pretty consistent. I have about five of those, five different looks. And just the content changes, the quote changes, whatever it is that I'm saying in that changes. So yep. with that aspect, I can really kind of determine, all right, the blue shirt seems to get more response than the red one. So then I can maybe use more of that and see see how it goes. Have you have you found a hot topic or, or the social topics a little more draw more interest or is it a specific could be a specific time, specific year if you just come off a trade show or if you just come off a venue where people are hot on that page on your websites or your medias because I've just met you and are those probably hotter topics uh, or greater means that when you have something more relevant or have you noticed that it really doesn't matter what the content is because it's social media and everybody's on it at different times of the day? Uh, well, as far as like the what the specific content is, is, it's obviously something that is part of my brand. It's you know goal setting, being more productive, uh, having the right mindset, just you know doing good business, that sort of a thing, and and being positive, very very positive, definitely. So as far as I don't really change the, the content, you know, I don't do anything political. I don't do anything controversial um, because I'm not sure when I'm going to post these things, which actually brings up another point that if you're going to schedule something like this, be aware of what's happening in the news uh, because if you say something – and something comes out in that news that day that might be associated with that. Well, you po you know, you plan that content two weeks ago, but it may be in bad taste that you're going to post that right now. Uh, and then one of the things I, I posted, uh, uh, I don't recall at the moment, but it had something to do with, uh, uh, you know, uh, unless somebody has a gun, then you might want to uh, get away from them. Uh, and it was in a joking manner, but. If I would post that when we have a major shooting, you know, uh, Paris just happened uh, uh, last week, the whole incident there. If I posted that at that time, it might be in bad taste. But since I didn't post it right then that day, it was done weeks before, you know, I didn't realize, oh, well, that's a bad thing. Uh, so if you're going to post it ahead of time, just kind of keep an eye on the news and you might want to go in there and go, let me just take that off for right now and save that for next week. I mean, movies do this all the time. There was uh, several episodes of some TV shows that they pulled from last week because they had to do with terrorist attacks. So they pulled those episodes off the air to show them later because it's like, yeah, it's not good taste right now to do that. That's very good insight because uh, there's a lot of time we set these programs up and they, they run. Now, are you concerned about flooding the social media with the same message if you're if you're putting it on Hootsuite and you're sending out do you try sending the same message the same meme to your Twitter your Facebook all your other social medias or do you kind of separate them so you're not swapping people with the same message and the same image over and over again especially if somebody's following you on multiple formats uh, I, I, it depends on what it is uh, I've got tweets that are scheduled to go out that are obviously just texts. Uh, so that doesn't go onto Facebook. That just is just a tweet. And then the images, the memes I'm talking about, I have those scheduled to go out, and they all do post at the same time on uh, Facebook, Twitter, 
and LinkedIn. And then I've got, I think it's not Instagram, Pinterest. Pinterest that goes out, but that's posted separately at, at a different time. So those three uh, social media networks, they all go out at the same time. I found that this is just my experience, and it may but may not be the the honest truth out there. This is just my experience is that people tend to have like one platform that they like, you know, and they go on Facebook. They're not too much on LinkedIn. Not, they, they don't tweet Facebook or they're on Twitter or they're on LinkedIn. So the chances of them seeing my content in all those places at the same time is you know, rare. It does happen, I'm sure, but I think all that does is just sort of, reinforce my brand it's another piece of content same one they just saw on Facebook but I mean how many times have you clicked on Facebook and looked at something for 30 seconds then oh I gotta check my LinkedIn right now okay oh 30 seconds there no you spend some time on Facebook you spend some time on LinkedIn so they may go back to it and then later down in their newsfeed on LinkedIn they're like oh there's that picture I just saw on Facebook from Fred okay well that's another image that's in their face about me you know, it's why Coca-Cola still advertises even after all these years. Everyone knows about Coca-Cola, but they're just reminding you, hey, I'm still here, still doing my thing. That, that's a good point because, you know, me being a marketing junkie, I'm all over the things. And sometimes from my point of view, I, I go, oh, there's Fred again. I've seen that one. It just give me something new. Give me a different cert. Give me a different sum. It just because I just saw it a half hour ago. But mm -hmm. that is yeah. good for, as you say, same reason we have commercials, I guess. It's that branding image that's burning into my brain of your product, your image, which is a good thing. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time out and actually talking about your process that you do. If somebody did want to get a hold of Fred Moore and actually find out about you, how would they go about doing that? Uh, no way in the world. I'm a mystery. I'm a ghost. You can't find me. <laughs> or you can just go to my website, which is morefred.com. Well, Thank you, Fred, for taking the time out and actually explaining this process because I've used it and it's great to get feedback from actually somebody who is using it and doing it and actually having some success with it. So well, I appreciate you, you taking the time. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.